Hello there, welcome to Proper DIY. My name is Stuart Matthews and today I'm not only going to show you how to drill through steel with just a simple cordless drill, I'll show you how I drilled these 9mm holes through this bottom flange of this RSJ so I could get a really good fix in between this timber and this beam. Not only that, because of my complete lack of headroom, I ended up doing it upside down. Want to know how I did it? And it's not actually as difficult as you think. Let me show you. Before trying to drill 20 millimeter deep holes in a beam like that, especially upside down, I think it's best that we first look at the two main principles for successfully drilling into steel. I'm going to be demonstrating that by drilling a hole through this piece of mild steel. Now mild steel, or low carbon steel as it's commonly called, is probably the most popular in the construction industry. This is the type of steel that that beam's made out of, and steel frame buildings, and bridges across motorways, etc. Obviously, I'm also going to be using my cordless drill, but the drill point, the drill bit that I'm going to be using today is this Bosch HSS point TQ drill bit that I purchased off of Amazon for less than five pounds. This is a fairly standard drill bit, and although I've used it a number of times, it's still absolutely sharp. So let's get on and have a look at how to do this. Although this offcut of mild steel is only 10 millimetres thick, the same principle applies for thicker members. If I can get through this successfully, there's no reason why I can't drill thicker steel beams. So I just mentioned two main principles for drilling through steel. And quite simply, they are the force or the pressure that you put on the drill bit and the speed of rotation. So the first one, the force or the pressure, you need to apply as much pressure as you can to be able to drill through steel. For something like this, I'm gonna be putting most of my body weight behind it. If you're using a drill press, you've got that leverage on the arm where you can actually put a vast amount of force behind it. And that's how most drilling through steel in workshops is carried out. Not so convenient when you're underneath a beam. Secondly, the speed of rotation. Us DIYers and woodworkers like to drill fast. So we think that drilling a hole is all about if you're going to do that with steel, very quickly the drill bit is going to heat up and go completely blunt and you're not going to get any further at all. So speed of rotation while drilling steel, first of all put your drill onto the lower setting and this doesn't work with the old drills that are either on or off. You need something that you've got a variable speed. And the sort of speed that you should be aiming at is maybe only two or three revolutions a sec second. So something more like So to us DIYs, that doesn't really feel like drilling. But trust me, the slower you can go, the more successful you're going to be. So I'm going to use this hole punch just to put a bit of a divot where I want the hole to go so I don't wander around. Then using a little bit of WD-40 as a lubricant, I'm going to start drilling this hole. So starting to put some quite large weight on this and then starting really slowly. You can see immediately those flakes of steel starting to come out, which is a really good sign. If after a few revolutions there's no sign of chips or spirals of steel, you need to stop and reassess the situation. This is a time that most people will speed up to try to get into the steel, which is absolutely the opposite of what you should be doing. Okay, so that's a nice start. It's better to actually get some big spirals coming out, but that's a good start. A little bit of oil in there. Now this time, just going to continue, but just put as much pressure and weight I can just to, just to get it going. So here we go. Just 
another little break. I'll just add we're about halfway through now. So let's just keep going. Plenty of pressure. Now on a drill press where it's very, very stable, you tend to get more spirals than these little bits coming off. You can see there's just lots and lots of little bits of steel. Now if you're really stable, or if you're on a drill press, you end up with these, these spirals coming out all the time. Probably because I'm standing up and I'm moving about, they tend to be cutting. Now we're almost through. And the other thing I found was actually when you're getting to the end here, the best thing to do when just as you're breaking through is to actually speed up. So you'll hear me do that when I start feeling it biting at the end of the drill. No YouTube drilling video will be complete without an assessment of how long it takes to drill a hole. So here it is, another example from start to finish without any interruptions. We're on the low speed, plenty of pressure, and go. That is that. So I think you can see by that that actually I had to put quite a bit of my own weight behind this drill to put enough pressure on this to cut through successfully. And as long as I controlled the speed okay, I wouldn't ruin the drill bit and I got through. And I've got two fairly tidy 9mm holes here, which then led me on to the conundrum how to put the same pressure to actually drill a beam like that. And first of all, I actually tried it by hand, pushing upwards with the drill. Very quickly realised I'm not Arnie Schwarzenegger and I could only put a couple of kilograms at best into the, the force on the drill, which is really not enough to cut with. So what I then went on to fabricate was just this very simple frame, which is basically a bit of 4 by 2 pinned into the top with a bit of a shelf here. Now, using one of these clamps in the opening rather than the closing direction, underneath this drill meant that I could actually exert enough force upwards to start getting chips and actually drill these holes. Let's go and have a look at that footage and I'll run you through it and see how this little jig and frame saved the day. Before I get multiple comments from viewers telling me there are magnetic drills on the market made to carry out this exact job, I'd just like to tell everyone I know. I've used most of them in my day job in the construction industry over the last 30 years. However, I don't own a rotor broach type magnetic base drill and I'm reluctant to spend over £100 a day hiring one unless I really have to. Hence doing it my way saved a lot of money and worked extremely well. The bottom flange of this beam is around 10mm thick but it's got another steel plate welded to it to help carry the adjacent brick course on the outside of the garage. So I'm actually drilling through 20 millimetres of steel in total. I kept using oil to lubricate and keep the bit cool, although this low RPM I'm drilling with really didn't heat it up much. I think I could have probably got away without using it at all. After a couple of successful holes, I was getting quicker and more proficient. So I brought in version two, where instead of holding the clamp continuously to exert the required pressure, I used, yes, another clamp. This is my two clamp technique. This was even easier on the hands and I could have continued indefinitely all day if I'd had more than 10 holes to drill. Drilling steel like this, especially when it's above your head, is absolutely imperative to wear eye protection as these little metal chips go absolutely everywhere. If I had more holes to drill, I think my version three, rather than continuing to use my quick clamp, 
I would buy a cheap scissor jack, the type of thing they sell on Amazon for changing a wheel on a car. This would make it even easier to exert continuous pressure and you could put a lot more pressure on the drill bit. All these holes I drilled allow me to bolt these 4x2 securely to the beam, making the future stud work I'm building underneath it extremely sturdy and well able to cope with future wind loading. So that's how you drill holes in steel and into RSJs above your head if you're not Arnie Schwarzenegger. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned a thing or two about drilling holes into steel. If you have, please consider subscribing. The group is getting bigger. There's lots of videos already to look at and lots and lots more on their way. So from the end of another week in the workshop, I'll see you next time.